please welcome the Pell Bros Podcast. Congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks on becoming the NBA champions of 2021. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> that's what I'm going to hope, hope. That's what I hope I'll be saying in next week's episode of the Pelbos Podcast. But welcome, episode 38 here. Myself, James, uh, back back on another episode here with my co-host, Bradley Dougie Kobe. Yo, so yeah, I might have jumped the gun there. You guys are probably thinking this guy a time time traveler or some shit, but hey. Uh, it's clear, it's clear, it's obvious who I'm backing for the NBA Finals, but um, yeah, right, recording today, it's a Sunday, Sunday night for Sydney. How are you grinding? Grinding on Sunday night, how many fucking times are we going to tell you? We ain't making this shit up, but continue. Yeah, grinding. I, I, just, I just stood up from my bed just then, that's how I fucking shit up. <laughs> I'm not joking right Wait, now. Don't, don't tell him you're in your bed, eh? just you're grinding, uh, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, oh, in your yeah, office, yeah. mate, in your office. Uh, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. Still, I'm standing up right now, so I'm grinding. <laughs> I'm grinding. Yeah, um, like like Ryan said, we're hustling out here in a bloody lockdown as well during a pandemic. Come on, dishing up yo, the content for you guys. So, yo, um, appreciate it. But kill him, kill him. It's Sunday. We just witnessed this morning the Milwaukee Bucks defeat Atlanta Hawks uh, and become the Eastern Conference Finals champions four two. So, uh, about a quick round of applause just to congratulate them. Let's just... That's cool. Let me get my. Here we go. Um, but yeah, I figured we just record. I think the last time. That was an episode you were with uh, Tommy Chi. Shout out to yeah. you. shout out to him and you guys are talking about the Clippers, but <laughs> that was like a complete like I mean, y'all can hate for the prediction for you know for a man, you know going by his word. You know I said I like I told you guys you know from day one I'm going for the Clippers right um, in these playoffs. So can you really hate a man for freaking you know? Just going down with the ship, you know what I mean? Like, or, like <laughs> I'm gonna get you're gonna you're gonna beef with me. You're gonna call me out for fucking not backing out of my fucking word. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you want to talk shit, go for it. But all I'm saying is that, and you know, I'm you, we're correct here too when I say this, is that Phoenix Suns are pretenders. That's all I want to say. That's all I want to say. <laughs> now nah, look, you stuck to your gun, so respect. And like yeah. I said, you're always gonna back the Clippers. Uh, you know, if there ever was a jinx, then that might have been one of them because. <laughs> You guys True. just recorded it pretty much the night before the game. I think you guys were saying that they'll tie up the series. Uh, I think it was 3 3, was it you say, or something like that? And then, um, oh, yeah. oh, no, no, no. So that was even earlier than that. It would, because um, I would have said to make it go two, like two, two each. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But then it went, they went down 3 1, and then that freaking Paul George game, and then it went up 3 2, and I'm like, yo, still hope. And then, yeah, <laughs> no. But, but all I want to say is those last couple of games where Zubak got um, KO'd. Boogie fucking was stepping up for us. That was fucking... I, I was very, very happy to see that. Yeah, 100%. So yeah. How about before we jump into the today's games and, and talk about the finals, of course, let's um let's quickly recap over the Clippers and the Phoenix Suns. So yeah, unfortunately, the Clippers unable to, to get over the hump. Really just needed Kawhi in the end. And like you mentioned, Zubak was out injured. Um, it's pretty unfortunate, but... They're too, too tired, bro. It, like, they didn't even need Kawhi. They're just too tired, I reckon. Like, let these let these men rest, you know? Yeah, you could see, I mean, Paul George went on that nuclear game where I think he scored 41, was it? Um, brought them back, and then then that last game, he just struggled to find his shot, and really, no no kind of, um, no hate on him. It's just he's been playing way too many minutes this whole playoffs game. I think his whole playoffs run, essentially, I think he's played most minutes out of the whole playoff series. and um, Yeah, that's true. And way more than the, the second guy. So, yeah, shout yeah, out to, I- to them for that effort. And, and like you said, um, at least... At least Cousins got his minutes. Rondo, unfortunately, being benched for most of the game, but uh, Cousins went out there, put up some good minutes in the absence of uh, Ibuka Zubak, but just wasn't enough. Yeah, I was going to say, too, um, you're bringing up that stat, and then the other stat is, uh, what's his face? Reggie Jackson. How can I forget what's his face? Reggie Jackson is the man with the most three-pointers in the playoffs. Yeah, crazy. And and you guys give mad shout-outs to Reggie. I think I was talking to you before um, that, that, yeah, if there's anyone from me, my perspective is a shout out, it would have been Reggie Jackson. So, yeah, that guy's oh, been yeah. crazy balling. I think he's on like a minimum contract as well. So, I think yeah. no one wanted to pick him up, but crazy that he's he's on so cheap and now, now he's probably, probably going to get paid. Some team's going to yeah. throw uh, a fat stack. I reckon, I reckon, um, so, I asked Tommy about that actually. He reckons that, which I agree with too, he'll stick around in Clippers for a little bit of a pay cut. Like, he'll still get, he, like, um, Tommy mentioned something about like bird, bird's rights, uh, um, you know, and then because from that, some kind of deal can be negotiated. I don't fucking know. Um, but I'm just hoping because 
what he told me is a very like inspirational story. Basically, during his time in Detroit, right, was fucking SVG was coaching him. Um, <laughs> Shout out to SVG, yeah, right? Like it, you know, you can obviously imagine how depressed this, this <laughs> man would get, right? Like as in, basically, when he came to Clippers, apparently he was at the point of you know an early retirement, but he's had his like best year yet, so he feels like rejuvenated. You know what I mean? He feels like he, he's falling back in love with the sport, right? And on top of that, too. I don't know if you're aware of this, but him and PG-13 were actually, like, boys back, like, you know, roommates at one point and shit. So this is, like, a dream come true for them. So I'm, like, I could definitely see, you know, the boys sticking around, you know, just for another fucking um, season at least. Yeah, I heard about the PG thing because PG did an interview and he was saying, like, yeah, him and Reggie were best mates and they have been dreaming about it. But, yeah, didn't know about the fact that he was thinking about early retirement. Um, yeah, that's, that's quite heavy. That's quite heavy, yeah. So, um, yeah. And then apart from that, too, um, going off Reggie Jackson in, in the um, – after game six where they lost, you know, the man was having, like, tears and shit during his post-game interview. Bro, that's respect, bro. Like, you know, from the heart, bro. This this, this man's freaking pulling my heartstrings, bro. I love this guy. Yeah, he was saying, like, the Clippers saved him and shit. So, yeah, I didn't know yeah, he was, well, there he you was go. looking well, there, at that's, – That's probably what he means then, eh? I didn't know he was looking at early retirement. I, I actually, yeah. like, quite liked him on that Pistons team. I thought he was pretty much a baller, but, you know – Super inconsistent, but there was a period of, there was a stretch I remember that he was contesting as potentially like all star level and shit. But yeah, obviously Detroit didn't pan out. Um, you know, it's probably because uh, or you Detroit. could just say Stan Van Gundy, <laughs> yeah, didn't pan out. or that, right. um, or it could just be Detroit Pistons itself. But yeah, crazy. Um, still definitely deserves his flowers. He was he was still even balling out in that last game. So yeah, I don't think he really had a no. bad game. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, I mean, watching those games, you could clearly see, like, yeah, poor George struggling. But when you think about Reggie, it's like, damn, did he really even have a bad game? So yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it, uh, you could you could argue the last game wasn't was probably his like worst performance, but it wasn't a bad game. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. But, yeah. but by then they were just like we said, they were super exhausted. Um, yeah. They probably just needed that that one player to go to, and and you know, that would have been Kawhi in that situation. But you know, uh, injuries yeah, it's unfortunate. Part of the game. Apart, apart from that, the the last shout out I want to give with Clippers because this needs to be said. Big big ups to my big boy uh, Tyron Lue, bro. I think he's gained like everyone's fucking respect, right? Yeah, hard. Everyone was like memeing him as like you know he only won because he had LeBron and shit. Not gonna lie, I thought that as well because during that stint at the Cavs, which I followed quite closely, it was clear that like it was like a led GM situation where fucking like, <laughs> LeBron just Le calling GM. the shots. Back he's at like. It. Bro, it's like any player that he wanted, they traded for and shit, and he was like making the calls. He was like the top dog and shit. So, I I I admit I said stuff about Tyron Lue, like yeah, he's overrated. He only yeah, won, me too, me too. Needed no, LeBron, we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> this is proof. I mean, respect to him that he went into an assistant coach role, like, and and kind of like worked his way back, gained the trust of the players, and then you know obviously with Doc not working out, and in the end Doc being overrated as fuck, uh, as everyone found out, uh, Lue just. Took the opportunity, you know, players backed him, players wanted him in that coaching role, and he's killed it. Um, those those rotations, the adjustments, uh, just, you know, bringing in Terrence Mann, bringing in Cousins, bringing in Reggie Jackson. Um, obviously, you know, Rondo, unfortunately, copped the brunt of that, and he pretty much played like the first series and then never, never got sawn again. But, um, yeah, definitely shout out to him. Yeah, and, all, oh, and last one, obviously, Pat Bev. I love that ending, like what he did, like <laughs> how he how he shoved um, Chris Paul. I was so happy when I saw it. I was like, yes, you know, um, uh, um, just because. And a lot, you know, that's what I hate about these people because you know I know Pat Bev is a very def the wise guy. You know, like some people love him and other people just fucking hate him. So I get the the haters hating, but then there's people that are loving. Obviously, you know, we're dealing with fucking quote unquote redditors here. You know what I mean? So like, the level of testosterone is not necessarily <laughs> so high. But I'm talking shit. No, I'm, I'm actually serious. But um, anyways, what the point of, I'm trying to say, right, is basically these guys are saying, like these guys that are like, yeah, I'm usually cool with Pat Bev, but like that was like not cool. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, like CP3 didn't even like say anything. Da, da, da. But hey, I watched that replay a few times, bro. Um, and, you know, I'm seeing CP3 just giving him a dirty, bro. And Pat Bev, he's, he's going to represent LA, bro. You know what I mean? And so he can't let CP3 think he's got, you know what I mean? Like he's... Like, well, that's going to be the final interaction of, of theirs throughout that series. Like, nah, see, uh, what do you call it? Pat Bev going to give him a fucking shove. And, you know, know that we're coming for that ass fucking next year, the year after. And, you know, it's not over. It's not over. So what I see, I see is that that's like the ultimate Pat Bev 
like play. You know what I mean? If there's any like who the fuck else is has the fucking balls to do that shit, right? <laughs> Pat Bev. So respect to Pat Bev. Um, uh, you know that's kind of my two cents. Like I've I'm, I've been a fan of Pat Bev, and then I'm seeing him do that. I'm even loving him even more, right? Uh, and the people that are freaking flip flopping now bitching out because that's not cool. What the fuck are you even watching Pat Bev for then, right? That's how I see it. Yeah, fair just enough. Just my rant. Just my rant. No, that's fair. I, I honestly think, yeah, like you said, he's quite. Um, he divides the fan base, but I'd say the divide is like ninety percent hate, ten percent love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I didn't say that. So no, like I, I don't love him or I don't hate him, but, and I know, like again, I don't endorse violence. Um, oh. But, and like you know, I I do think it's like a dog act. If it, if the guy doesn't do anything to you, and obviously you go up and shove him, and he's not looking and stuff, then like that's a dog act and shit. But at the same time. I'm like, yo, it's CP3, so who cares? Like, yeah, this yeah. guy's this guy's doing mad flops and shit, and I think yeah. honestly that ruins the game more than you know this shove that Pat Bev did. You know, like, yeah, exactly. Like, um, those players are pretty like princess, and like anything that happens, like even a tiny shove, even like you slightly get touched, these guys all like writhe in pain and like flop and shit. Like, that's like that part of it is like ruining the game more than anything. Um, and I, I hate feel that. Shit. that. Preach, I hate that shit. preach. So, CP3, Take him to church. CP3, Take him to bro. church. If you're listening, just because you played for Nola, just because you bought out, I don't give a fuck. You're, you're Yo. flopping. Yo. Always flopping and always acting a fool and shit, trying to get these cores. And like, there was one in particular where he like jumped on the three pointer and then like exaggerated, flopped, fell on his back and like pretty much injured himself from a flop. That's like poetic justice right there. Yeah, like, that's common. That's right true. There. That's true. But yeah, that's just um, my my two cents on it. Preach, preach. Yeah, if anything, um, if we're going to, because I already said like you know ten minutes ago, this is the last thing I want to say about the series. But I need to say something about Chris Paul, right? Basically, uh, going off of what you said, man, I'm exact same page. Like in terms of like fuck CP3, and you know people want to talk shit because you know I was just talking shit about how people flip flopping with Pat Bev, but for me. This is just a growth journey, you know what I mean? Like, um, so as I first started just um, watching Pelicans basketball and whatnot, you know, I was I was like very anti CP3 because he was in the Rockets by then. I'm like, fuck this guy, always flopping da da da. But because of that series in which he was pretty much the best man in the, in the um, on the court uh, in the West Coast Conference Finals versus Golden State Warriors, in which the Houston Rockets fucking choked, um, was it 27 consecutive missed threes? James Harden, he did dick. Obviously, because CP3 went down. But the point of that is that CP3 gave me respect from that, right? And then after I kind of like, and then after that, he had another season, he had another season with Houston. And then after that, okay, see, so obviously. And during that phase, I'm like, oh shit, this guy, you know, as I learned more about Nola, Nola history, whatever, I'm a bit like, oh, this guy was ex Nola. You know, I got to represent, fuck, bro. I have his jersey. I have, I have his, like, the old school Nola jersey. <laughs> bro, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, yeah, like, that's how deep it went, right? But after that fucking, like, series that I just watched versus the Clippers, in which this kind of just fucking flopping, 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 fuck that guy. You know what I mean? Like, as in, I'm, I'm back to anti-CP3. Even though I have a fucking Nola CP3 jersey of his, fuck him. Yeah, I mean, you can still... It's like a generational thing. You can still... You can yeah. still love the old school CP3 uh, when he probably wasn't as bad. And then, you know, now that he's gotten older, he's trying to play to the ref a bit more. Um, game's probably evolved a bit, so it's unfortunate. But hate seeing that shit. hate seeing that flopping because it's, it's ruining sport. You see it all in soccer and it's like the worst fucking thing ever. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, these guys are just... They they just... They're just like so... Uh, what's the, sensitive and like... Even if they get touched a little bit, they're all like fucking writhing in pain and shit. And it's like the worst thing to see. I hate it. Absolutely hate it's it. It's true. It's true. And yeah, man. So I guess to like transition this, I want to say basically how that how that freaking um, game ended for me, right? After I saw Pat Bev do that push down, I'm like, all right, fuck this. You know, I'm not watching anymore. So I closed because I'm like, what? I really want to fucking watch CP3 and fucking Devin Booker and shit like that. Hold up the Western Conference like trophy. I'm like, fuck that, right? So I closed that shit. And then I fucking went to sleep and I napped and I woke up. And then that's what I told you, like, how I, I've been working out, like, fucking 7 p.m., 10 p.m. That's pretty much one of those days. Um, yeah, because I was just pretty much, at that point, my energy for, like, you know, geeing up the freaking Clippers throughout the playoffs has come to an end. And through that, I was just like, that's, already, that's a wrap for me today. You know, I'm going, I'm going to fucking sleep. So, yeah, that's why I had a nap. Anyways, why I bring that up is to reflect today's experience 
in which Drew Holiday, because you know, you've been shouting out the Bucks, but I'm gonna be. I don't really give a shit about the Bucks. It's more so Drew Holiday. I'm seeing my man. You know, he's having a fucking game today, um, closing out the uh, the Hawks. Obviously, they had trade back too, and finally, I I what I you know I kept the game on to see him, Chris Middleton, all the boys, uh, obviously having the interview and whatnot. But you know, also holding up the freaking uh, Eastern Conference trophy, bro. Um, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. What can I say? Yeah, hundred yeah. um, percent. Well, we get into the box. Obviously, this is a Pelicans podcast, um, so definitely yeah. have to shout out all my pels out there. Interesting stat about all the conference finals teams: they've all had at least one player from that 2018 Pelicans team that we we love so much that went deep in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, Four O Portland Trailblazers. Sorry, I have to remind you guys every time. Uh, yeah, there's at least one player in each of the conference finals teams. So, major shout out to the Pelicans. We're up and coming, bro. Uh, doesn't help that they've all left the team and and seen success. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to so, shout out to Solomon Hill. <laughs> shout out to our fucking team and franchise being miserable, uh, depressing um, four players. But yeah, Solo Hill on the Hawks, uh, Drew on the Bucks, obviously. Um, Etwan on the Suns, which. Um, is it, pretty... Why do you say Etwan, man? It wasn't Etwan. Etwan, sorry, Etwan. Um, and then... I, 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 sw- I swear, like me and you, the entire time we've known each other, you've referred to him as Etwan too. Like that's what I'm trying to say. Like I, I swear, I this fuck? Etwan thing is new. Yeah, where's this Etwan coming from? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I don't remember. Yeah, uh, yeah, I feel yeah. like it's. I feel like it's one of the situations where announcers calling him different things. So. Oh right, yeah, I'm yeah, just... potentially, potentially. Whatever yeah. it is, Etwan, shout out, whatever, and then um, yeah, Boogie, Boogie, and uh, and Rondo. Um, but yeah, the reason oh, I bring that up is obviously. Just a shout out to the Pels and then getting into um, obviously Drew and like like you said, so good to see Drew ball out. I missed the live presentation of the trophy and shit, but I watched it on YouTube after and it was so good seeing him like holding the trophy and getting the interview because man dropped 27, 9 and 9 in a fucking closeout game. Um, And he had like steals and all these defensive plays. He was fucking killing it. Yeah, his defense was probably better than his offense. His offense was hit and miss. Um, Still pretty good efficiency for Drew standard. Um, and like we've been saying, <laughs> like we've been saying, everyone, the man's so inconsistent. As much as we love him, we just know how inconsistent he is, and he's shown it all yep. playoffs. But even if he was inconsistent on offense, he just turned it up on defense. Man, he was just stripping Trey, um, getting in the passing lanes, defending, defending the Hawks one to five, pretty much. It was fucking intense. Like he was just switching onto anyone and just and taking the uh, the challenge. I think he played like, swear God, he was on the court for like the whole game. Uh, 42 minutes, close enough. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I don't yeah. feel like I ever saw him on the bench. So, man must be crazy tired right now, um, as well as the whole Bucks team. But massive shout out to to the Bucks. Um, I don't know if you saw the third quarter, but Chris Middleton just fucking yeah, yeah. went he just off. Went Kobe. He just went Kobe. Holy shit. He was like so cold and then 23 points in the third. It was amazing. I was just like, man, I want to see him get to 30. Like, just keep taking shots. But fortunately, only 23 points. Had a really shit fourth quarter. Um, but it came down, almost came down to the wire. I think the Hawks brought it down to like five or seven, and then yeah, yeah, yeah after that it was just a blowout. <laughs> See ya, boys. Yeah, so crazy. Congratulations to the Bucks. Been saying it that I think the Bucks would get through. I think predicted it right, and um, yeah, it's pretty obvious what we feel about the finals. Like I said in the intro, but yeah, major shout outs to the, to that team, and and Giannis is supposed to come back. All right, I think you were saying yeah. that he, he's yeah. been, he was supposed to come back for if, if Game 7 was happening? Yeah, so if the Game 7 was going to be happening with, um, of course, with the Hawks and whatnot, then uh, Giannis would not only be like playing, but he, he would have been on the starting lineup. So if that is true, then, yeah, we, we should be expecting a, maybe not a quote-unquote healthy Giannis, but we'll be having Giannis for the whole series coming up this finals. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, this gives him a bit more rest, I guess. He doesn't have to play another game, so um plays... One, one less game, obviously. So glad that they closed it out. Um, he was also there for the celebration, held the trophy for a bit, but he, he knew that this was like Chris and, and Drew's, like they earned it from this game. Yeah. So major shout out. The other one I want to give is um, PJ Tucker. Um, yeah. The reason is because he was so cold this game. He was one, I think he was zero and six from the three. So he had like no points or some shit. He was fucking terrible. And then in like the last minute, uh, he shot a three from the corner. It went in, and that was a dagger three. It, it took him from I think a seven point lead to ten point lead, and then after that, the Hawks were like, "Yeah, we're like GG." Um, yeah, packed it up, this brought in the bench. But yeah, PJ Tucker, cold as fuck, and then hits hits a dagger three. It's crazy. Um, that guy definitely yeah. serves his props. I was gonna say, man, PJ Tucker is such a very interesting pick to have. Just an interesting piece to have 
like in the playoffs, you know, just because in that very unique situation with the Rockets when they had Russell Westbrook, you know, and then they went just full small ball. PJ Tucker was the center, right? Mm. So he like just him himself, like specifically PJ Tucker, like no one else was part of that experience in the entire league, right? So he himself to be that kind of guy playing that kind of role, he, he has like a very kind of, I guess, um, like set of skills if that if that makes sense, right? I'm not trying to sound like fucking like t- Liam Neeson t- taken, but <laughs> yeah. he, you know, he does have his own kind of unique set of skills, right? Like that, like what a quote, no what other a kind quote. of play, yeah, yeah, that no other kind of um like um player on the floor, like um in the playoffs or in the league like has. So I think he's a very interesting piece to have because that's the thing, PJ Tucker, you know, he, he there was I do remember that like many times in you know, a freaking Houston Rockets jersey, he's just killing it from three, so he can do that kind of shit too on you, so. I'm very, very interested to see uh, PJ, how PJ Tucker like um, does within the next series in the finals too. Yeah, the th- funny thing about the Bucks is they're just so inconsistent. So like they'll go on a game where they shoot, they go crazy from three and they dominate that game. Like when they when they beat the Hawks by like forty, and then they'll have yeah. other games where they just turn off. And it's funny that they recruited PJ Tucker and Drew Holiday, like two of like some of the most inconsistent offensive players, <laughs> um, just to add to their squad. Uh, and it's it's like they rarely ever get inconsistent consistency, and like even Chris Middleton as well. Like the guy will go off for thirty, and he will hit every shot, and then he'll have another game where he, he goes like four and twenty three from the field or something. So major inconsistent team. But if they can just switch on, and again they only have to switch on for four games, uh, it's it's you know looking likely, especially with Giannis back. Um, it's going to be an interesting series, but definitely definitely go the Bucks, mate. Like Bucks and six. Oh wait 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 wait. It's um, it's the because it, Phoenix has a better record, right? So it'd be that. Yeah, I'm still going for Bucks and six. I don't give a fuck shit. Yeah, I reckon Bucks and six or Bucks and seven, but yeah, hoping it comes true. Um, yeah, definitely need Giannis back, but it will be such an interesting matchup. Just want to see Drew clamp on fucking CP3, put him in his place. Uh, hope to not see any of that flopping shit. Fuck that. Yeah, honestly, I I was even thinking about getting. Uh, Bucks Drew Drew Holiday jersey just because like fucking I'm loving to see Drew Holiday play in the playoffs and now in the finals and potentially hold up the fucking was it Larry O'Brien trophy? Yeah, harder. He's like literally living our dream. We're like living vicariously through him. Yeah, he's basically. not even in our team, but we just got to support the team because we got to we got to support him and got to give him yeah. so much love because you know bought out for our our franchise. And if if you're a Pelicans fan but you don't like Drew, then you can switch off and stop listening. Oh, yeah, fuck. what the fuck? Like, how do you, like, <laughs> the fuck, right? Like, that should be like an automatic, like, okay, obviously here in Australia, we don't have the capital punishment, but, you know, for <laughs> something like that, you know what I mean? Like, come on, guys. Like, you, you're trying to tell me you're a freaking Pelicans fan? Oh, just because you watch some highlights of Zion on fucking, or you're, because of Lonzo, get the fuck. And, you, and, you, and then, like, that's cool, but you cannot disrespect Drew. Like, they can't, they can't be anyone that hates on Drew. Like, as, as if there's, like, one Pelican fan that hates on Drew, right? Like, get fuck. Yeah, you wouldn't expect him to be, um, it's crazy that guy's the amount of success he's having this year. Obviously, got that all NBA defense respect, and then gets the Eastern Conference Finals. Also, Team USA. Like, man, wouldn't have achieved any of that with on the Pelicans. Sadly, sadly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, sadly. I'm very happy. I'm very happy to see him on Team USA too. With obviously Chris Middleton, I'm I'm happy for him there. Um, I was gonna say though, um, because obviously we were talking about our predictions and whatnot. I did want to bring this up because I said it to you off the record, but. I'll say it whilst recording too. Basically, to further elaborate on my point that, you know, Phoenix Suns are just pretenders. Obviously, you know, I think my mate um, Tommy was saying the same thing too. Basically, to get to this, to get to the finals, they've been just versing injured teams, right? LeBron and AD, right? And then Nuggets, Sergio Balmari, obviously. And then obviously the Clippers with no Kawhi, right? Um, so they themselves are just a pretender kind of team, as opposed to Bucks, right? Even if we're not even talking about Miami and this Hawks team right now, let's just talk about freaking Brooklyn Nets. You can argue, oh, yeah, but they were injured, man. Freaking Harden and then Kyrie. Whatever. Even like the team that we're versing, that's just still that's still like a fucking OP team. Like you know, you have to kill that team because if you don't do it, someone else is going. Like, like 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 they might take over the whole league for the next how many years, right? So. Um, as I'm saying, like, even though Brooklyn Nets had an injured team, they're so fucking OP, they're so, like, fucking, you know, like, Golden State Warriors with KD level of fucking, like, bro, that's, like, too much, that having them injured is still fucking hard, you know what I mean? So, 
you know, they, they, uh, what I'm trying to say is the Bucks are proven, right? They're, they're battle tested. So I'm like, I'm, I, I definitely, definitely um, have high hopes in them as opposed to fucking Phoenix Suns. Like, Phoenix Suns still do pretty good, but I reckon they match up quite decently. Also, you got Drew Holiday, lock up what Devin Booker, CP3, whoever needs to get book, uh, whoever needs to get locked down, Drew Holiday, your boy. And then obviously, um, what's it called? We got, okay, oh yeah, but we got DeAndre Ayton, but we got Giannis, right? So it's kind of how I see it. It's pretty much game after that. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I respect the Suns for turning around. I think they were like two years ago, they were like the last in the league or some shit. So I yeah. respect them for turning around. They're like the the Cinderella story. And like, that's what we're trying to achieve essentially of like a team that's <laughs> yeah. at, the, at the bottom of the pits. Like we're not like the bottom bottom yet. But like we're pretty much almost there. <laughs> um, we, so, we may as well be there. Yeah, and I guess we quote unquote had our own rebuild in the sense of like letting AD go, or obviously he wanted to go, but letting Drew go for picks and stuff. So we're in that rebuild. So technically we they're like our inspiration. We should be modeling towards that. But so I respect that part of it. Um, but like I was saying to you, like yeah, respect Devin Booker's game, ball out. He can score seventy points, score forty points, whatever it is. But he's just a bit of a rat. I just don't find him that <laughs> likable. Um, I feel like I feel like he's always trying to pick fights. Like he's a guy that instigates. I feel like it's fine for me if you like if someone's doing something dirty shit on you, like it fouls you hard, and like you go after them. Like sure, that's fine. But I feel like he's just always trying to pick fights for like nothing as well. Um, See, so, yeah, I mean, straight up, if they have success, so be it. But definitely not backing them. Um, I'd rather see the Bucks get it. With Drew. Yeah, um, boy. If it wasn't the Bucks. Uh, couldn't care less who won it. Let's say if it was Brooklyn, let's say if it was Atlanta, couldn't care less whether it was Suns or yeah, that's East, true. East team getting it. But in the end, um, yeah, shout out to the Suns, but I can't back you. You're too seeps to watch. And yeah, Devin Booker, you're too much of a rat. Yeah, no, I feel that. I feel that. Um, that oh, bro, I need to put this like on the record, right? Uh, I have a very interesting like story when it comes to Phoenix Suns, and the reason why I'm also just like very anti Phoenix Suns right now. I remember when I was you know traveling around Europe and shit. I think I was in, um, I was in Barcelona actually, right, having a shower at like my hostel, and then it was like one of those, like maybe you know, in the, like there's a toilet, you know, like a public not a public bathroom, but you know, you know what I mean, like like a guy's bathroom, and there's a bunch of cubicles. Yeah, but a few of them were like shower. As I was showering, I was overhearing some fucking cunts talking about NBA and whatnot, right? And we had just, like, this is just when we won the draft lottery. We just drafted fucking um, Zion, right? Um, so I came out of the shower and shit, and, I'm, like, you know, I approached, there's two, like, American gentlemen, right? Um, I said gentlemen, but fucking poofs, right? <laughs> Basically, they're talking about NBA, da, da, da. and then I'm like, oh, yeah, da, da, da. I tell them about, you know, oh, yeah, you know, I'm an older guy, pals, da, 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 representing, you know, what's going on? You know, I'm, like, flexing, right? One of these guys tells me he's he's a Phoenix Suns guy, and then what I was like to him was I was like fool like <laughs> I like later you know what I mean like giving shit card you know what I mean like I was just dismissing him you know what I mean and he just like was copying it right and now look how the tables are turned bro <laughs> so that's what I say I'm just like I don't yeah I don't want to give this specific American dude that I randomly met in fucking Europe for like two minutes like you know as I was having coming out of the shower of a hostel right. I don't even know his fucking name. I don't even know what he looks like. All I, I, all I remember is there's a fucking American guy and, you know, he was a Phoenix Suns fan and I said that shit and I don't want him to have the satisfaction of getting a fucking um, championship. Like, already to the point there are right now, it's already too too much to be proving me wrong. You know, like, he's probably thinking in the back of his head, oh, yeah, I'm that freaking, that <laughs> sexy looking guy um, that, um, who was, like, big, muscular, built, and he was a Pelicans fan telling me, you know, Phoenix Suns, um, you know, ain't shit or whatever. Basically, I know he's he he doesn't know what I look like. He doesn't know, but he remembers me. I know that, right? And I know in some kind of like the, like the energy in the universe, like he's trying to fuck with me. You know, he's he's like, yeah, bro, yeah, you want to talk shit? You want to talk shit? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. What I'm trying to say is that I know I can't remember. I don't know what he looks like, blah, 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 but I just want to put it on the record so that this energy is into the universe. But mate, bucks and six, shut the fuck up. That's what I want to say to that guy specifically. If you're listening in and you know who the fuck you are, fuck you. That guy's probably like, before he goes to bed and he's like lying in bed, <laughs> about, to, about to dream. He's dreaming that he's the Suns in 4 guy. You're that Denver yeah. fan. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, just, yeah, he's yeah. just ripping into you like, 
Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Right hook straight to the face. That's what he's imagining yeah. like every night before. That's he true. Exactly. And that's even more reason why he ne- this needs to happen. Like it needs to be back at six and he should be happy that I'm not coming over, driving over to um, where the fuck he lives in USA and actually just bashing him. For, like, you know, like <laughs> legit just bashing him. I'm not like, not even, I don't want to kill him. I don't want to do it. I just want to bash him and then leave him back. Like, oh, what are you going to do? Oh, like, you know, like by the time he called the police or whatever bullshit like that, I'm already on the plane back to Mexico you know, or Australia. Either way, you can't catch me. Like, later. <laughs> yeah, just uh, cover your face and never see you ever again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously, everything I've just said is all, everything that has said, not only this episode, but all content up to this point um, of 9.02 p.m., 4th of, 4th of July, 2021, Australian Eastern Time. And, and all future content of mine is this all satire so you know I, I can't be held responsible if anything like that happens yeah and that that applies to every every single app so can't can't call us out for anything we've said in the past few apps so this exactly is, so this I, is the I, official I statement gave, yeah i just gave like Im, like immunity now I, I mean, I like <laughs> yeah. immunity. i'm like because like if anyone wants to talk shit i'm like yo yeah bro but did you hear at like um, like 27 minutes and 23 seconds like Ryan W said this specific line oh you did it oh then shut the fuck up <laughs> so exactly now we've got now we've got this and we've got James Coe signing it right just then so we're sweet like legally I think we're in the clear yeah episode 38 everything from here on and as well as before all those other 38 episodes 39 episodes I think because we started on zero yeah satire satire official, official and this, and this episode included and this like just everything <laughs> yeah. we do this everything this whole everything. this whole brand this whole yeah this everything is everything. satire this well, everything like, is satire our instagram our, our youtube channel free plug right there our website pelbras.com yeah true everything is that it's all it's all uh free satire satire don't take it seriously yeah yeah but but having said that bucks and six and you know i just really just want to have that satisfaction of like because that's the thing, even last year, this guy would have had great satisfaction. Phoenix, Phoenix Suns going fucking 7-0, um, you know what I mean, in the bubble and shit, right? So this guy is just, and then they get CB3 traded to the team. He's probably like, yeah, 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 yeah. So the fact that he's in the finals, is like, okay, this has already gone way too too, too far. And also the fact that I, I hate CB3 again now. Um, and because of that, it's just like, it needs to stop. You know what I mean? You've had your fun, mate. <laughs> But fuck off, you know. <laughs> let let us Pelicans boys um, step in the mix now, you know. Show, show how it's really done, you know. Yeah, crazy that you uh, randomly met met a fan in Barcelona. That's pretty fucking random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's if anything, I've been wanting to say it for a while. I'm just I'm happy that I was able to remember it to say it on the fucking record. So that's good. Yeah, let's hope in a week's time, or maybe in a week and a bit, uh, we can come back to episode thirty nine and just. Yo. Uh, sweet justice and we'll be the ones cheering we'll be congratulating the bucks um wrapping up the season and and hopefully drew's got that finals mvp in his hand that'll be crazy that'll hell be crazy. yeah hell yeah um, but yeah i yeah. think overall that that wraps up our predictions at least we won't even go yeah. any deeper than that um i was gonna say i got one little thing I yeah go for it have you, have you have you seen these ads um on the like nba streams uh like lonzo and leangelo and the, the, is they're like promoting the Black Black Widow? Oh, I've, I've seen I've seen like a part of it. I've seen a part yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, no, because that's like technically Pelicans Red. I just wanted to shout that out. Like, um, I, okay, all I'll say about that is like, Scarlett Johansson is a fucking babe, right? Um, and that's not satire, right? <laughs> um, oh wait, is it like I don't know? Should I say it is? Or like, am I go- can I get done for that? <laughs> we're gonna get cancelled now yeah can i get done for freaking saying scarlett johansson is a babe bro all the the white knights are gonna come out and cancel the yeah oh my god who the fuck you think you are bro what the fuck i was i was like a patriot supporter of yours but if you said that man like i can't i can't deal with your shit anymore you took you you, you, um you crossed the line man um yeah but i do want that's what that's what i wanted to bring up like I don't rate, like, obviously the Marvel movies that much, and I don't really give a shit about, um, what do you call it, Black Widow and whatnot, but all I want to say is, obviously, shout out to my boy Lonzo, he's there, but, you know, I wish you were fucking training, um, and then, um, you know, practicing that fucking jump shot, not even that, just practicing how to be fucking aggressive, bro, what the fuck, um, and then, what's his, and then, 
I don't really, yeah, Leangelo, Rookie of the Year is cool, but the big shout out is obviously Scarlett Johansson. Shout out, Shorty. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, I don't think we'll be liable for that. We're not going to get sued. No defamation suits here, no, no cancellations. I think we're safe to say that, but yeah, I can yeah, agree, agree 100% you, you, with that statement. You say that, you say that, but then basically episode 39, you're the one, you're the one on this podcast going to be reporting that Ryan, Ryan DW has, um, has passed away through like <laughs> suicide, suicide in a jail cell. <laughs> <laughs> suicide, so, suicide with uh, two bullets in the back of his head. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so that's what I trying to say, like, I'm sorry if like me saying Scarlett Johansson is a babe is so fucking offensive to the point that I need to fucking get killed by the fucking government. But fuck, you know, by all means, by all means, if that's the, if that is what Allah wills, then let it be. Alhamdulillah. I don't know what that means, but I think we can leave it at that. Um, don't think there's any other news in the NBA at the moment to talk about. Obviously, more stuff will come out once we're done with um, the actual season. Yeah, because uh, I, I was gonna say we 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 can even talk about the Pelican stuff like that, but not this episode. You know, I reckon yeah, we'll leave it episode. for after after because like, there is stuff we can talk about, but you know, we may as well leave it for after this season is done. Yeah, the only one thing I want to quickly say, um, but we can shoot potentially deep dive in later was um, shout out to Nor. I know we love our shout outs, but shout out to Nikhil yeah, who's who's playing um, with Team Canada. I think you were telling me he was balling out as well, but unfortunately, Team Canada today got fucking. Um, knocked out. Or, Team Canada. Yeah, they they got beaten by Czech Republic, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't think that they're going to the Olympics. So GG. Um, <laughs> Eat one leaf. <laughs> yeah, unfortunate, but that's pretty much it. I think uh, we can wrap that up. I think that was thirty eight minutes. Not not too bad. Any yeah. final words before we we call it? No, pretty good episode. All I want to reiterate is the fact that the, these players have been freaking amazing. You know, yes, and I know people yes, want to talk yes. shit about the injuries and whatnot, but that's what keeps it even more interesting. That like it, you know, in a day, like from game to game, it, it could like the series could completely fucking change. That's what makes it so fucking like hype. So I thought this fucking series, like right now, is the best time to be an NBA fan. Not, right now is also the best time to be. <sighs> I don't want to lie to you guys. I don't want to say it's right now is the best time to be a Pelicans fan, but you know, <laughs> fuck it. You know, like, what the fuck? Just, it's just, fuck it. Just, yeah, being a Pelicans fan is cool. Let's just say that. Yeah. No, really quickly, um, to reiterate your point, yeah, playoffs have been amazing. I, I want to, what's the opposite of a shout out? I want to shit on any any analysts or commentators who've, who were saying recently, like, these playoffs suck because they don't have a, a like a big market team. Um, oh, like a LeBron. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bro, oh, fuck. my God. Fuck out of here. I think like Stephen A. Smith was saying that shit. Like, yeah, fuck bro. you. Stephen um, A. Smith, come say that to my guy, bro. Smith, Smith and Wesson, 45. So oy, what, you, what, oy, you oy, oy, oy. what you want? The Glock 19? What oy, you want, oy, baby? Say in America. Um, satire, baby. Satire. But uh, yeah, fuck you to anyone who's saying that because this has been one of the most high playoffs. It's actually good to see teams, who, small market teams as well, who haven't won championships, who haven't even made the finals in like 30 years. Um, we're sick of seeing yeah. stupid Lakers and fucking these big market teams keep making Golden every single year Golden State. Um, if you think that, you just you don't know your competition, and you just obviously they're just doing it to clickbait and shit and like stir up the the viewers. But in the end, uh, fuck you. Yeah, and you know, like I said, uh, I guess cheers to the box again for winning, and oh, specifically to Drew Holiday, and I really, really hope to see this man kill it in these in these finals i can't believe we're actually at the finals now and on top of that um i can't wait to see this man lift up the trophy and you know listen to his post-game interviews and whatnot yeah hopefully he shouts out pelbros for supporting him all these Yo. years um but yeah we'll see you on the next one and hopefully we'll be celebrating a, a box championship we out peace out <laughs>